Doctor Doom the Book of Doom. Here I present to you the omnibus celebrating Doctor Doom's 60th anniversary. Here we have a monograph on one of the greatest characters in comic history. And I say monograph because technically this is not an omnibus, it is an anthology, a compendium of a few selected stories and most prominent story arcs of the King of Latveria. And don't get me wrong, this thing is massive. We're talking about three and a half kilos of Doom grandeur throughout six decades. Now, being an anthology means this book isn't aimed exclusively at die-hard Doom fans or hopeless completists, no, no. This omnibus is perfect for all those who want to know or deepen their knowledge of the character. From his origins to his rivalry with Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four, his relationship with T'Challa, the X-Men, Namor, Doctor Strange, magic, science, politics, every aspect of Doom is touched upon in this book. Still, there are so many stories that were not included here, but I guess there is just too much Doom greatness out there for a single volume. We are, after all, talking about the most complex and deep character of Marvel Comics. And that's why I'm doing this video, I intend to go through what's inside and what's not included, so that if you want to integrate your reading or just learn more into some aspects of Doctor Doom, I can give you some tips. Yes, you'll have to listen to a spaghetti eater with a very bad accent talking about Doctor Doom for a while, so leave now or proceed at your peril. You have been warned. Of course, we start with Fantastic Four number 5 with Doom's debut story by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, and then Fantastic Four number 6. But Doom's already outgrowing the Fantastic Four in 1963 when he appears on the pages of Amazing Spider-Man number 5, and he starts elbowing his way to become Marvel's greatest threat and greatest hero. When he wants to. Fantastic Four Annual to a landmark issue because it narrates the origins of Victor Von Doom, and I mean his original origins by Stan Lee. And then we have Doctor Doom pitched up against the Fantastic Four and their devil in Fantastic Four 39 and 40. And here I feel like we're missing a very classical story arc by Stan Lee, which is Fantastic Four 57 to 60, when Doom steals the power cosmic of the Silver Surfer. And then we have another significant issue because in Marvel Superheroes number 20, we meet a very important person for Doctor Doom, which is Valeria, the long lost love from his childhood, the girl who had love for the gentle child Victor and not for the Grimm and Carlos Doom. Then we jump to the 70s with Astonishing Tales, an anthological series that can be considered Doom's first solo series, even though it was in tandem with Kazaa. Here we have issues number 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, and Astonishing Tales number 8, which is another very important issue for Doctor Doom, because we learn what Victor's up to every year on Midsummer's Eve, the lifelong battle with Mephisto to free his mother's soul from the clutches of hell. Marvel Super Villain Team Up 1 and 2, and Marvel Super Villain Team Up 13 and 14, in which we learn how in dire need of a chamomile to Magneto is. And this story ends up in Champions number 16. Then we have Amazing Spider Man Annual 14, and Uncanny X Men number 145, 46, and 47. Little interjection here because if you want to read another great story with Doom and the X Men, or just see Doom succeed where Reed Richards could not, which is always a pleasure, then I suggest you the 1987 miniseries Fantastic Four vs. the X-Men. And after that, Invincible Iron Man 149 and 150 with a story arc known as Doom Quest, which I can describe a uh, paraphrasing Mark Twain, an American billionaire and a Latvian dictator in King Arthur's court. And we also meet Morgan Le Fay with whom Doom has a liaison. A pretty serious liaison as for this still goes on today. But jokes aside, this is a great story that received two sequels, the first one in 1989 on Invincible Iron Man 249 and 250, and the second one more recently in 2008 is the miniseries Legacy of Doom. So if you like this story, I suggest you to go check those out. Moving on, we enter John Burns era with Fantastic Four 236, Terror in a Tiny Town. And we proceed into the 80s with Fantastic Four 246 and 47, and one of my all time favorite Doom stories, which is This Land is Mine. And here I must open a parenthesis because this story is the direct consequence of what happens in Fantastic Four 197, 98, 99, and 200, or the story arc known as The Overthrow of Doom, which is not included in this book. I really don't understand this choice. That's a story arc you should really check out if you want to know why Doom has to regain control over Latveria and why does he ask the Fantastic Four for help. Moving on, we have issues number 258, 59 and 60 of Fantastic Four 
and then we jump straight into 1984's Secret Wars, but we only get 3 issues out of 12. Notably issue number 10, 11 and 12, that means from when Doctor Doom steals the power of the Beyonder up until the end of the story. But Doctor Doom's been the main villain throughout the whole event, so it definitely suggests you to pick up the complete story. What would happen if Doctor Doom took over the world and proclaimed himself the Emperor of the Earth? Would it be good? Would it be bad? Even the Avengers couldn't tell in Emperor Doom by David Michelini and it is the first issue of Marvel graphic novel to star Doctor Doom. The second one is of course Doctor Strange and Doctor Doom Triumph and Torment by Roger Stern and Mike Mignola, one of the best Doom stories ever told. And the beginning of the really good relationship that Doom has with Strange. Then we have Fantastic Four 350 and 352, where Doom comes back to Latveria after being pulverized by the Silver Surfer and Terrax in Fantastic Four 260. And again, if you want to know where he gets this really cool armor, which is the Prometheum armor, you should check out Excalibur 37, 38 and 39. In Marvel Double Shot number 2, we delve again into Doctor Doom's origins, and it is a really good addition to this book, it's not a story that gets reprinted very often. And then we have Mark Waite's story arc Unthinkable. Now, I, I really don't like this story. I think it's a bit too much. Even for Doom, it, it's a bit out of character, maybe? Still, I understand it, it's an important story. It's iconic. You can't leave it out. It's, it's okay. But if you enjoyed the story, why don't you check out the following story arc, which is authoritative action, Fantastic Four 503 to 511. Fantasy Four Special Number One, a really interesting and delicate story from 2006, and finally, also from 2006, is the miniseries Books of Doom by Ed Brubaker and Pablo Raimondi that re-narrates the history of Victor von Doom and how he became Doctor Doom. Now, Books of Doom is an enthralling and outstanding tale that really sums up Doom, and I think it's the perfect way to close this volume up. That said, we have more than 15 years that were completely left out of this omnibus. So here are some advices on what you need to pick up if you want to know what Doom's been up to in the more recent years. First, from 2010 is the miniseries Doom War and its prelude, which is Black Panther 7-12, to that narrates the war between Latveria and Wakanda for the control of the Vibranium. Second, is 2015 Secret Wars by Jonathan Hickman. Here Doom is front and center in a story that brings all of his emotional complexity to the surface. Then I recommend you take a look at infamous Iron Man, the series by Brian Michael Bendis picks up directly after Secret Wars and he presents us Doctor Doom donning the unusual armor of the hero as he replaces Tony Stark as Iron Man. And finally, from 2019 I wholeheartedly suggest you Doom solo series by Christopher Cantwell. The series even received an Eisner Award nomination but sadly it was cancelled after issue 10. It encountered a little problem in 2020. Nevertheless, it's one of the best Doom stories in recent years. And I leave you with a bonus, which is Stan Lee meets Doctor Doom. It's a fun little story, and the art by Salvador La Roca is amazing, that I feel would have been a nice addition to this omnibus, but alas, it was not the case. Too bad. If you have critics to make or questions to ask, please leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time. Ciao!